Hello everyone and welcome to the next Orca lesson. Today we will be learning about mysterious and fascinating beaked whales and this is the first in a set of two lessons about beaked whales. My name is Anna and I work for Orca. Orca are a whale and dolphin conservation charity who are dedicated to the protection of whales, dolphins and porpoises and their homes in waters around the UK and the rest of the world. Our vision is oceans alive with whales and dolphins. As you already know from the very first orca lesson, this image here shows the around about 90 different species of whales, dolphins and porpoises, collectively known as cetaceans, that you can see all around the world. Over orca lessons, we've learned so much about these incredible animals. But can you point to any of the animals in this diagram that belong in the beaked whale family? There are 23 species of beaked whale and you can see all of the beaked whales circled here in orange. But before we delve into the depths of these fascinating beaked whales, there's a bit of background research we have to do. We're quickly going to have a look at biological classification. This is a very, very complicated topic, but we're going to look at it really simply. It is fascinating though, and there are plenty of places where you can do more research into biological classification in more detail if you wish to do so. So biological classification is the process by which scientists group living organisms. Organisms are classified based on how similar they are. Historically, similarity was determined by looking at the physical characteristics of an organism. So basically what they looked like. But now in modern times, classification also uses a variety of other techniques, including genetic analysis. So biological classification works a bit like the library does. So you go into the library and you see books are divided up into certain areas with the children's books in one section and the adult books in another. And then within each of those sections, there'll be more divisions like fiction or non-fiction. And within those sections, there'll be even more divisions such as crime, science fiction and romance in the fiction section. Finally, you'll get down to a single book. So it's just like that with biological classification getting down to a single species of animal. So broadly animals are split into these eight categories here on the left and each one of these categories has dozens of subcategories. If you wanted to map out every single animal species on the planet you'd need a piece of paper probably as big as planet earth. To help us understand biological classification we're first going to look at how humans are classified. So it starts off quite complicated to begin with, so you'll need to bear with me, but it does get simpler as we go along. The domain is our start point. And there are three categories, the eukaryote, archaea and bacteria. Most living things are eukaryotes, made up of cells with distinct nucleus and chromosomes that contain their DNA. Eukaryotes vary from single-celled organisms to complex multicellular animals and plants. Then we get down to the kingdom, and the organisms in each kingdom are similar in certain ways. So you're probably very familiar with the plant and animal kingdoms. They are very diverse groupings. A blade of grass and a huge tree may seem very different, but both are still plants. And elephants and tiny grasshoppers are very different, but both belong in the animal kingdom. There are other kingdoms, but we won't go into detail about those now. All we need to know is that humans belong in the animal kingdom. There are 36 phylums in total, and you can read some of the examples here. But humans belong in the phylum Chordata, which means that we have a backbone. Then there are five classes. As we learnt in lesson one, these classes are separated by whether or not they can regulate their body temperature, 
their manner by which they consume oxygen, and their method of reproduction. So our classes are fish, reptiles, birds, mammals and amphibians. And humans, of course, belong in the mammal class. Then we get down to the order. And there are 19 orders in total in the mammal class. But here are some examples. So we've got pinnipeds, which are seals, sea lions and walruses. Cetacea, of course, that's whales, dolphins and porpoises. Primates, for example, apes. Insectivora are a group of mammals that includes hedgehogs, moon rats, shrews and moles. Marsupii are pouched animals, so opossums, kangaroos, wallabies and wombats. And chiroptera, which are bats. Which of these do you think humans belong in? It's the primate order. And then there are nine families in the primate order, including the hominidae, which are great apes, and the limuridae, which are lemurs. So we belong in the hominidae family, in the genus Homo, which leads us to the species Homo sapiens, or humans. Okay, but what about a cetacean? Let's try the blue whale. Just like humans, we all belong in the mammal class, but the rest of the classification is quite different. So the blue whale belongs in the order Cetacea. And we also have to introduce another category here, a suborder. As we know, cetaceans can be split into two groups. They can be split into the odontocetes, which are toothed cetaceans, and the mystocetes, which are baleen cetaceans. Can you remember which one the blue whale is? Yes, it's a mysticete, so it's a baleen whale. Then there are four families in the mysticete suborder. The family Balinidae, which means the right and bowhead whales. Balanopteridae, which are rorqual whales. Cetotheridae, which is the pygmy right whale. And Esrichteridae, which is the grey whale. So, because blue whales are rorqual whales, they belong in the Balanopteridae family. And that means they have rorqual pleats. So remember, rorquals are the types of whales that have these pleats running from the bottom of their mouth all the way down to their belly button. And these are strips of muscle which can relax and open up and expand to allow the whale to scoop up huge amounts of food and water in one go. And then those muscular pleats can contract and get smaller to squeeze all the water back out of their mouth just to leave their food. There are two genus in this family, the Balanoptera, which we will talk about in a second, and the Megatera. There is only one species of whale in the Megatera genus, and that is the humpback whale. And here are the species in the Balanoptera genus, the blue whale, fin whale, Amara's whale, Brooder's whale, the common minke whale, the Antarctic minke whale, and the say whale. So now we've got all the way down to the species level of the blue whale. And the scientific Latin name for the blue whale is the Balanoptera musculus. So you can see the name really does reflect the genus that the animal is in. But what about the beaked whales? Let's come back to these guys now. They're very strange looking, aren't they? Or perhaps they just look so strange because they're quite rarely seen. I still think they are beautiful though. So just like the blue whale, beaked whales are also in the cetacean family. For this example, we will discuss the Cuvier's beaked whale and its biological classification. So which suborder do you think it's in? Are they a toothed cetacean? or an odontocete, or are they a baleen cetacean, a mysticete? Yes, it is a toothed whale and it's, it's an odontocete, but only the males have teeth. We'll talk more about that a bit later on. They have a single blowhole as well, characteristic of all the toothed cetaceans. 
It is a whale though, because it has a small dorsal fin two thirds of the way along its back. Now let's look at the family. So in the Odontocetes, there's numerous families, the Delphinidae, which are oceanic dolphins, the Monodontidae, which are the narwhal and the beluga, the Kojidae, which are dwarf and pygmy sperm whales, Phocenidae, which are porpoises, the Physeteridae, which is the sperm whale, the Ziphiidae, which are beaked whales, and I certainly can't pronounce the last family name, but that's the river dolphins there. So the Cuvier's beaked whale belongs in the Ziphididae family, the beaked whales, and the beaked whale family are the second largest family of cetaceans after the oceanic dolphins. So there are six genus in this family, and Cuvier's beaked whales belong to the Ziphidus which are the only member of this genus. And here we have the species, the Cuvier's beaked whale. So there we've got a lot of strange words pronounced very weirdly, but it just gives you an idea of how these animals are classified. So now we know about their biological characteristics, let's look at the beaked whales in more detail. So here we have a beaked whale, the Gervais's beaked whale to be exact. And a lot of the beaked whales are often named after famous naturalists. That's why they have people's surnames as their species name. What do you think these guys look like? I think they look like strange dolphins. <laughs> what do you think? So their key identification features are their long beak, so their mouth is quite long and slender, just like some species of dolphin. Another characteristic feature is the dorsal fin, so remember they're a whale, so it's always two thirds of the way along their back and it's quite small. So if you see an animal with a really long beak coming out of the water and then you see a small dorsal fin two thirds of the way along the back, it's going to be a beaked whale. Another distinctive feature is the absence of a notch in their tail fluke, except for one species called the shepherd's beaked whale. From these illustrations, can you see the top picture there? That's, um, say for example, a humpback whale tail fluke, and they have a notch in the middle of their tail fluke. But on beaked whales, they do not have this notch. Their tail goes straight across the top there. It's quite hard to see in the field, but it is really characteristic of the beaked whales. So, another characteristic of beaked whales is their teeth. They don't really have a full set of teeth like dolphins do, although at some point during their evolution, they would have done. It's only the males that have these teeth in the form of two tusks, which stick out from their lower jaw. In females, the teeth do not develop and they remain hidden in the gums. Did you know that some species of beaked whale can only be identified to the species level by looking at the shape, size and position of those tiny little tusks? So some species of beaked whale are extremely hard to identify. And males use these tusks in territorial battles, which is why they have numerous tooth rake scrapes and scars on their head and their back. They do have a bulbous forehead because of that melon organ, which they use to help them with their echolocation. Remember that they're a tooth cetacean, so they use echolocation. And they are very deep diving. They'll forage on deep sea squids. And they don't really use their teeth to grab prey. Instead, they use a suction method to feed and they slurp and suck up squid into their mouths, just like a hoover. The beaked whales are the widest ranging family of cetaceans geographically and different species of beaked whales are known to live around ice edges and some species are known to live around the equator as well. Beaked whales can be seen alone or in pods of up to 20 individuals. 
Some species like the longman's beaked whale can be seen in pods of over 100. And in terms of their size, they are a medium sized cetacean. The smallest is the pygmy beaked whale, which is only 3.7 meters long. So about the same size as kind of an average dolphin size. But the largest is the Baird's beaked whale, which can, which can grow just over 11 meters long. And in terms of how long they can live, the oldest recorded age of a beaked whale is 84 years old for a male Baird's beaked whale. But their age range generally is between 27 and 39. But we don't actually know very much about beaked whales, and here is why. So this very strange looking creature here is the Blainville's beaked whale. Look at the strange shape of its head. Can you see that tusk coming out of the front of its beak? So the reason why we don't know very much about beaked whales is because they're found in deep offshore waters, generally over 300 meters deep, but they can be found much, much deeper. As we already know from Orca Lessons 7 and 8, the Cuvier's beaked whale is the deepest diving marine mammal on the planet and it can dive to 2,992 metres deep. Beaked whales are known to congregate in deep waters off the edge of the continental shelf and around seamounts and canyons and oceanic islands. And these deep sea features are often extremely far away from land. So humans never really see them. And they hardly spend any time on the surface because they're always diving to find their food, which is usually deep sea squid. So they're diving really, really deep, hardly spending any time on the surface when we as humans can see them and research them. Did you know that some species of beaked whale have never been seen alive? We only know that they exist because a body that has washed up on a beach has been examined by scientists. There's still so much we can learn about these animals. They're also quite shy, so they don't really tend to approach ships or boats like dolphins do. They'll just quickly surface to breathe and then they'll disappear. And remember, some of them can hold their breath for over two hours. So then they're not coming up to the surface again after that long. So we hardly ever see them. And scientists believe there are still some species of beaked whale that have not yet been discovered. The last of all the cetaceans to be discovered was actually a species of beaked whale. It's called the black bear's beaked whale. And this was confirmed in 2019 by scientists in Japan. They looked at the DNA and the physical appearance of an animal that they suspected was a new species. They're quite similar to the Baird's beaked whale, but they have a much smaller body. The body is more spindle shaped. They have a shorter beak and a darker color. So that was the newest cetacean that has been discovered. Okay, so to recap, we know all about biological classification and how cetaceans are classified. We know there are 23 species of beaked whale, and we know they are strange, mysterious, and also fascinating creatures. So in the next lesson, we're going to delve a little bit deeper. We're going to look at this strange feeding technique they have. We're going to have a look at some case studies of different beaked whales and how orcas research is helping the conservation of these species. And we'll also look at the threats facing beaked whales too. Thank you so much for listening to another orca lesson. If you want to learn more about orca, please visit our website. It's orcaweb.org.uk. Thank you very much.